lot of great middleweight adventure bikes these days. Hot segment. I've had a chance to ride all of them, but what I haven't had the chance to do is ride all of them back to back. So what we've got now is a little bit of everything. You know, what's big in the adventure segment as far as middle weight motorcycles that kind of keep going bigger and bigger. But you know, this is the spread of what's hot and I'm really looking forward to uh, two days of testing on these bikes. Got the rest of the guys out of the office with me. So uh, I think we're gonna have a good time. Hope you guys enjoy the video. Right on, so that was two days of riding with the uh, 2021 middleweight adventure uh, segment. Really, we have five bikes here, so we got to kind of sample what all the uh, different manufacturers are doing with this segment. And it's been one of the hottest, uh, and you have things like the KTM 890 Adventure R that are pretty bitching to ride off-road, and then you kind of have everything that runs the gamut between really intense off-road that maybe gives a little bit up for touring comfort, and then you have bikes that are stellar touring bikes that uh, still do pretty good off-road, really. And so we also got Dunlop to give us their new Trailmax Mission. Uh, they call them 50-50 tires. I would say they're a little more street biased, um, you know. But we got everything here with these tires on them, and they, they work pretty good, I think. They're great on the road. Um, maybe not quite as much traction as a, like a TKC 80 type tire off-road. But I'm definitely glad to have everything on a level playing field rather than, you know, this bike coming with TKC 80s and another coming with street tires. So thanks Dunlop for that. We appreciate it. So let's kind of go through here and get everyone's feelings. We've got a, a couple different levels of off-road riding and uh, decades upon decades of touring between all of us. And so let's uh, take a look. I guess we'll start with the KTM since I'm over here. Uh, hey, Sean, how do you feel about the KTM? I love it. Uh, I was really impressed with uh, the motor for an 890, you know, not quite a full liter bike or a 1200 like some of the full size touring bikes. It's got a lot of punch. Uh, there are some compromises in, in the setup in terms of comfort, as you were alluding to earlier. That was one of the bikes I was thinking of as you were saying that. <laughs> Seat is a bit firm. Reminds me of 30 years ago when I actually used to motocross. You had those <laughs> firm seats. So that might be something some people might want to think about for if you're going to do a lot of road miles on it. Uh, but very competent bike off-road and very competent on-road as well. I remember about three years ago when we did the big bore adventure bike shootout and we were testing the 1290. It really didn't come to terms so well with the 21 inch front and I'm not sure what tire we had on at the time, but we were going around some twisties and... Mm -hmm. just... The TKC80 probably didn't Okay, help. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was sort of giving vague feedback, let's yeah. put it, but I felt very confident on the front of that bike. Love the motor, and that thing just feels like, almost like a big 450 motocross bike when yeah, you get into I mean, the we've dirt. Yeah, have seen, seen a lot of people do it, a lot of amazing stuff on it, not me, but you know, <laughs> like guys like Quinn Cody or Chris Birch have done really amazing stuff on it, so yeah. I agree. And the only other thing I guess I'd want to add when you pointed out to me the on-the-fly traction control adjustment, after a couple times of stopping, put the bike in neutral and like mess with the menus or turning it off, turning it back on, we got a lot of loose dirt and sand here and several of these bikes were in road mode and it's literally to the throttle stop, you know, poodling along <laughs> behind somebody at 12 miles an hour. So to be able to not have to pull over and stop if you're gonna do a lot of off-road. And then, you know, that's what you'd expect from KTM. Yeah. They're the off-road company. So if your idea of an adventure is more getting in the dirt and connecting it with pavement, that bike is definitely the top of the list. The electronics are my favorite feature about this bike. Definitely rally mode. You can change the throttle response. So you've got rally that's really sharp. 
um, and then you can adjust the traction control on the fly with the directional pad on the left switch gear. And being able to do that over, like Sean was saying, over varying terrain is, is really nice to be able to do. John Nave, you spent some time on the 890 Adventure R. What do you think? You know, they did their homework on that bike. Um, that was the bike that I, as soon as I got in the dirt on that bike, I was shocked at how easy it was to ride aggressively. Ryan helped me with uh, some suspension settings and to be able to dial in the traction control and, and, uh, and make changes on the fly. I felt the bike was, it feels lighter than it is. Um, I'm used to, uh, uh, I ride a 450 uh, dual sport bike and that bike, that KTM, I felt like I could almost go as fast on the trails as I was on my 450. So I concur with Sean, it's a very light bike in, in comparison but uh, KTM did their homework. I like that bike. Uh, great bike in the dirt, terrific. You know, it, I think to your point of how nimble it feels, it has a lot to do with this low slung 5.3 gallon gas tank, because it just keeps all that weight so low around its really compact engine. And it just makes it feel, you know, you don't really get the top heavy feeling that you get with some of these bikes, you know, bigger bikes with bigger tanks and whatnot. And then the chassis, you know, the suspension package on this is the WP, uh, explore suspension that you get on like the EXC line. So they've, you know, they've they've really made it, done a good job, I think, of uh, making this bike perform well off-road for sure. John, what do you think about it? You seem to be enjoying it. Yeah, I enjoyed it, except it's time to turn around. The seat's kind of tall in the dirt. <laughs> it is but, a little um, tall. <laughs> yeah, I, I heard everybody talk about how good it is off-road, but I managed to get on it for the ride up S22 out of Brago Springs this morning, which is a fast flowing road. And I was surprised how good how good it worked there too. Those tires stick pretty good on the pavement. I was surprised and things got power. Makes the other bikes kind of look small in the mirrors on the straights. So yeah, and I enjoyed it off-road too. Even though I didn't ride it a lot off-road, it seemed like probably the easiest one to ride if you're a novice when you figure it out. It weighs a lot less than a bunch of them too, doesn't it? It's, uh, it's one pound heavier than the Yamaha. So the Yamaha and that one are like quite a bit lighter than the other three. Yeah, and it's as far as the horsepower, it is leading the charge at, with 92 and a half uh, uh, horsepower and 64 pound-feet of torque. So it doesn't make a lot more than the Triumph, but a little more than the Triumph and more than the others. More than the others, yeah. Yeah, I, I think that the tall seat height will definitely scare some people away, but maybe if you're going to replace the seat anyway, maybe you can get something yeah. from the guys that like seat concepts or something like that and get a, a softer, lower seat. Yeah, it's not, actually not even bad, except when you're trying to turn around in awkward <laughs> situations. It's and often, You know, and if you're yeah, out right. riding, you don't stop and turn around right. and make five <laughs> camera passes all the time. So not it's actually fine. That. Yeah. Evans, you got a a derivative of the 790 Adventure at home. Yeah, well, everyone knows I'm a big fan of this engine, but before I start talking about the 890, I think I ought to start with a confession uh -oh. and say that every single one of these bikes, their off-road capability vastly surpasses my street bias riding. I mean, it's, it's just, it's plain and simple. And so while they, they can all talk about how easy it is for, uh, to ride the 890 Adventure R, and it was easy to ride, it's wasted on me. It really is. So I love the engine. Everything works really well, but um, a more street bias bike would be more what I would be choose out of the, these bikes. Yeah. Well, I mean, this thing. What do you think about on the street? On the street, well, uh, I dug it. You know, going down the Montezuma grade last night at the end of the day, and we were just ripping along, and I felt really at home. You know, it's of course it's higher than my my 790 Duke is. But uh, there's a real you know, family resemblance in the way the engine behaved. The suspension, although it's softer than my Duke, um, kept the bike well controlled. It, it, was, it, was, it was good fun on the street. Um, I rode up here with two hours or an hour and a half of freeway droning to get here. And while I might not complain as much as some people about this seat, it wasn't much. It wasn't fun. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I, but I, I really like this bike on the road, too, because the, the motor, you know, it just really gets, it starts spinning up real quickly, and then it gets really exciting. And uh, with the 890, you have even more of that little bit of push that, that the 7, I mean, the 790 wasn't lacking by any means, but this thing has a bit more torque and a bit more power, you know, if you look at the dyno graph, uh, which you can find at motorcycle.com. But 
as far as the brakes and suspension, th this is kind of the whole package for me. I would replace all the tires with something more aggressive because I like to take these bikes uh, with, on as much off-road as possible. I think for me, changing the seat on this bike, I'd be totally happy with it. The bike retails, the base MSRP is 14.2 for the 890 Adventure R. Uh, we have rally mode, which is no longer standard. It used to be on the 790. And we also have the quick shifter and the, the rally pack and the technology pack is what it comes out to. So it's actually $550 over MSRP. So it's $14,750 for this bike. Um, but uh, as far as the off-road portion goes, there, you know, there's only one other bike in this pack that I think is, is anywhere close, but it, there's one thing about that motorcycle that we'll get to uh, soon enough that I don't think is anywhere close to being the same level as this bike. Um, so this kind of, the electronics package is great, the suspension is great, this bike kind of does it for me for what I like to do for adventure riding, which again is more off-road focused and it's a blast on the street. This, this is kind of my favorite. But uh, enough about you know, what I think is my favorite. What about this Moto Guzzi here, Evan? The Moto Guzzi, a V85 TT, travel. That means it has uh, the bags on it as well. But we left them behind because we didn't want this bike to have a weight penalty compared to the other bikes. But now we're getting more in the neighborhood of, of what I look for in an adventure touring bike. It's a really capable street bike. It's got the, the V-twin feel and sound, and except for uh, some you know, John noticed it a lot to comment on it a lot, the, some of the fueling abruptness. But this bike works really well on the street, and yet, you know, it's still capable of doing what I am comfortable doing in the dirt. For me, the bike that I chose, will choose as my favorite is the Goldilocks. So having a more street bias and less technical dirt approach uh, really appeals to me in this bike. But you, John Burns, what do you think? I think uh, we all know what you think, but of, of tell the Gucci. The audience. That's right. I, I like the Gucci a lot. I, I liked it the first time I saw it, and riding it, I don't like it much less. It's got kind of a weird flat spot, like 2,000 RPM or something. But when you get past that, it's okay. And uh, I, I, I really liked it off road. I think it's got the lowest seat here. Uh, it doesn't have all the electronic suites, but you can turn off traction control and then you can chug through sand and stuff. So it actually goes pretty good. And I've always, I said it before, I think bikes with longitudinal cranks have some kind of self-riding feel to them. And it seems to plug along through sand and stuff. What, what, what do you think of the Goosey? I like the Goosey. I was surprised. It's on-road manners. Uh, I was, uh, you know, I'm the amateur in this group of experts. And uh, I had a chance to chase them, and it was really quite impressive. Uh, the bike's got great on-road manners. Yeah. In the dirt, I think tires really help. I think it's got a, a something to be said for Dunlop Trail Max missions, which I run yeah. on my personal. And I agree with John. The seat bike really helped it off-road. It had great, great dirt manners. Not as competent, I, I think. It's not really as hard-edged a dirt bike. But again, I think the Guzzi was really fun on the road. I chased these guys down Montezuma Grade, and it was impressive what the bike was capable of doing. Good brakes. Um, I liked it. Uh, I think in a word, charming. And I don't mean that to be, you know, like a disingenuous, you know. Saying it has character. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I really mean the bike is charming, like you were saying with the longitudinal crank jaunt when you started up and that, you know, it's just, oh, there's something different here. The only thing that sort of does that is a boxer, you know, BMW boxer layout engine. Uh, definitely lower to the ground, which for you know either less experienced or shorter riders would be a good thing. It also makes me realize like what flavor of motorcyclist I am. As I was talking earlier to you about you know what what is your style of adventure? Are you more street biased? Are you more dirt biased? For me, motorcycling is about like pushing myself, pushing the bike. However, there are times I don't want that, and and I love you know I love riding scooters for getting around town. I love like a V7 or a V9 Bobber or something like that. I just felt like in this package for going out and if your friends are on different bikes, it was a little bit underpowered, a little bit softer. It's, it's still charming. I didn't get the opportunity to ride it around town or a city, so I think it might elevate in my estimation of it in that circumstance, but uh, it just felt a little bit like old tech, slow compared to these other bikes when we were on the twisties. Having said that, uh, that was the last bike I rode actually to this location we're at now in the dirt. And I was expecting to be like, oh, this thing's just going to be a pig. And it, it, it pleasantly surprised me, even with the 19-inch front tire. It wasn't as sandy here as our previous location, so maybe it, it might be different there. But it handles, as long as you don't hit the big bumps hard, 
you know, you roll off the gas. It handles the dirt pretty well, like you were all saying. I agree with you, and that, I did not expect that. So. Seems like the goosies that they kind of always go a little bit off the beaten path, you know? Yeah. And I think you, you guys are all kind of competitive and you want to see, kind of push each other to go faster. But if you want to come out here on these roads by, by, by yourself with Gina Lola Brigida on the back and a picnic <laughs> basket, you know, the goosey's it. All right. Some you nice know, cheese and a good yeah. Chianti. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's... You're not in a huge hurry, <laughs> but you can go pretty quick on it, but you're not trying to beat people anyway. Agreed. Yeah, I know. I, I've really loved, I love the styling of the bike and I really love the uh, yellow, white and red frame edition that uh, was, that they had when it first came out. Super cool looking and it was kind of reminiscent of their uh, Moto Guzzi's Dakar attempts, um, which, you know, didn't pan out all that great, but the bike looked cool. Um, <laughs> But yeah, this bike, it, it's really cool, you know, and yeah, it's maybe, maybe you don't want to go try and ca catch your friends on an 890 Adventure R, but if you're going out with some guys on, I don't know, Triumph Street, Stra Street Scramblers or Scrambler XE or something like that, that's kind of more in the vein of what I think that bike is. And it's, it's got a lot of character, you know, the engine's a lot of fun. It's, it sounds like a muscle car when you start it, you know, we were listening to it bounce off the canyon walls this morning. and. It's a really cool bike and the 19 inch front, it pushes a little bit in the sand and whatnot, but like Sean said, if, you, if you're just kind of doing a little bit of exploring, keeping the pace down, the suspension's fine. It's like, it's a little over six and a half uh, inches of suspension travel versus something like the KTM is like nine and a half. Um, but yeah, it, it's totally competent and able to do it. I'm gonna be happy to be riding, riding at home tonight. It's got cruise control and heated grips, so it's good for me. You don't, you don't ever have to adjust your chain and Adjusting your valves is a doddle. They're hanging out there. Pop Should be off those simple, covers. Yeah. You can do it yourself. Yeah, and this bike has a has a lot more technology on it than uh, Moto Guzzi's have had in the in the past. So it's a it's a good, really cool bike for them. New engine and everything. So, but guess what else is new? The Tiger 900 Rally Pro. Here it is. There it is, John. What do you think? Uh, we just did the Triumph eight, uh, Tiger 850 GT the other day, mm -hmm. which is the cut rate version of this. Uh, this is the Rally Pro, sells for $17,100. So it's got like $5,000 worth of uh, accoutrements added on to it. But I think it, they're worth every penny. You got the big TFT display, bunch of different modes, including off road and off road pro, which switches off the ABS and traction control if you're an advanced rider. Off road for me leaves the dirt ABS on a little bit. And, uh, I think for, for me, riding around in the dirt, this is my, my second favorite bike. Pretty easy to control, pretty good suspension. But the horsepower is not really even the story. It's the, the, the mid-range torque that this thing makes. It really delivers good uh, power that's easy to use in the dirt. And it's fast on the street, too. So you get cruise control, of course. Uh, has this one got heated seats? Heated seats for the rider and passenger. Yeah, heated, heated seats grips. for the rider and passenger. There's two electrical outlets. Uh, the big TFT display I already said. Uh, well yeah, the base 850 didn't have cruise control. This does. I should talk less about cruise control, huh? But <laughs> it's a big. It's this. Uh, if you were practical and you wanted the best combination of dirt and street, this is it. I think. Yeah, I wouldn't argue with you there. I think the Tiger 900 Rally Pro is. It's kind of the top of the line in that Tiger range for them. Mm -hmm. um, the GT Pro would be the more street approach to this mm -hmm. motorcycle, but yeah, in my opinion, it, it, you know, I might have said this is my bag, you know, the KTM because it does well off road. But if you want something that does everything pretty dang well, the Triumph 900 is is one yeah. of the best by far because you've got a lot of touring comfort on that bike. Yeah, it's the engine is awesome. The triple is great uh, on road and off road. Um, yeah, that's a really, really good package. What do you think, Evans? Um, well, I guess I'm just going to go ahead and spoil my final thing right now and say <laughs> that this is my, my pick of the litter. Yeah. Uh, I, I love this engine. It's mid-range grunt and, you know, going down up or down, you know, a, a canyon road is a lot of fun. It handles nicely. The brakes work well. Overall, it, the package is uh, something I like. And it's got enough uh, assistance for someone like me off-road that it increases my comfort level. Um, putting it in the off-road mode, not off-road pro, I, you know, but the off-road mode really, it, it refines everything to the way I need it to be off-road and uh, helps me from getting myself in over my head. For sure.
John Nave, what do you think? I'm going to I'm going to give it a single word and that is fancy. It was a <laughs> fancy bike, but <laughs> but let me, you know, let me um to really qualify, it's a lot of the fancy features on that thing were really usable. It has a, a link that you can use to, to activate GoPro. I thought that was really good. I rode that bike on on pavement and I was shocked at, um, A, it's very, very fast, um, but B, it handles really well. I was surprised, it just turned in really well. In the dirt, I rode it on Rally Pro and found uh, with these tires, again, I was surprised at how well it was able to do with some pretty rocky, I, I should say, not necessarily rocky, but sandy climbs where there's rocks involved and it was pretty docile. It was really pretty agile. Um, other than that, I like the bike. It would be, if I was gonna choose a, a long distance tour, it would be one of the top two bikes of this test. Right on. Sean Maddock. Yeah, that's a, a really cool bike. I liked it a lot as well. Um, I agree with you. It's kind of like right in the middle. What's the phrase? Jack of all trades, master of none. Exactly. This, it's pretty close to mastering some of the yeah. trades, you yeah, know. Um, the, the motor's bitching, the, the quick shifter auto blipper works great. Handles good, turn in's good on the pavement, um, good brakes on it. Again, and maybe it's the tires we're using as opposed to those TKC 80s. Uh, didn't get that weird, vague, sketchy f feeling. And we were, we were going on pretty good on some, yeah. some twisty roads. Um, and it was really competent in the dirt. You know, I was steering the thing with the rear. One of the things I wasn't crazy about, it reminds me of my own personal KTM Super Duke. Um, when you turn the bike off, the lawyers made them put it back yeah. into road mode. It's fine if you're going on a long ride, but like when we're stopping the film and every time you turn the bike off and it defaults back to that, it gives you a warning and says like, oh, you're, you're in um, road mode after turning off or something like that. I forget right. the wording. Bike starts in road mode. Yeah. Right. But it wasn't really an off-road pro. No, it's, it's a that that's what's weird about it is that it's a two-step process. Yeah. You select the mode and then you have to hit a secondary check button, which you don't have to do in the other modes. And it's, it's that that, right. that so confused it's, me it's a lot. It's that off-road pro too. in the center of the dash. I'm like, I'm good, and then I'm like literally throttled to the stop. You know, doing a steady 12 miles an hour in some sand. I'm like, <laughs> the traction control is working. Um, you also can't change it while you're moving either. You can't change it out of any of the street modes to off-road, so you do have to stop to do that. Yeah, so. and part of the reason I mentioned my Super Duke is because you can get a dongle for like 80 bucks, and it'll remember the, the you know, whatever the setting you left it in, and it won't put it back to the lawyer safe mode. That bike could use that, but if it was a newer rider or newer to off-road, I could see when that traction control was going, it does a good job of keeping the tires in line. It keeps it poodling along. You can get sloppy with the throttle and you just keep chugging. So the Triumph's, you know, a really good all-around bike. It, it does bring me back to something you were talking about, the KTM and that low gas tank, the low slung gas tank. That actually works. Putting the, the fuel down here, mm -hmm. because that still is fairly fun and nimble, but the places I noticed it, it's like you're coming up on a corner and there's suddenly there's a bunch of deep sand and these tires aren't so great in the sand. And trying to get the bike kind of hauled down and to turn, on that, I could feel like this top heaviness that you didn't feel around. on these two bikes. And interestingly enough, they're both 5.3 gallon tanks. Just a <laughs> different way of uh, putting it on the bike. <laughs> yeah, yeah. so the, I, I think that really works, having it down low like that. But I mean, that really the only weakness I could say yeah. with the Triumph. I mean, and this, these, the, the new Tigers lost like 30 pounds compared to the old ones. So they actually they made a big step in the right direction. And on, on the road, man, this has got all the stuff that's more comfortable than that one. Yeah, extra it's, 30 pounds is accoutrement. It, def it definitely is more comfortable on the road than the KTM. And, yeah. and I don't want to make it sound like I didn't think the bike was, it was surprisingly really good off-road. It's just that in that one place of getting on the brakes and with the sand, you know, and trying to like push the top down, I could feel it like still wanting to carry forward where I didn't feel it on these two bikes as mm -hmm. much. Right on. Yeah, I don't know. The Tiger, again, like I said, it's kind of, I think, one of the best all-around bikes. It's $17,100, so it is one of the most expensive bikes here. Uh, not the most expensive, but it's it's second place. But let's get to the most expensive one, around <laughs> $17,500, the BMW. John? Well, disclaimer is I have the big brother to this bike. I've got an R1200 GS Adventure. Um, you know, this bike makes 77 horsepower, 56 pound-feet of torque. But when you look at the value difference, when I first got on it, I was surprised how it felt comfortable. I was on the road 
how comfortable it was uh, for some pretty long and fairly quick street riding. Um, at 17,500 as tested, about it's um, it's a great value, and a ton of features. You know, it's got the TFT dash. I love. It's got heated grips. I love. It's got cruise control, which now I'm spoiled with cruise control. It's um, you know, it's a porker off road, no question. It's a heavy bike to ride in the dirt, but also I was doing things on this bike you know, kind of getting a little bit silly. Um, and I was surprised at how it would just snap right back into control. I like it. Um, this is my number one choice as a road bike during this test. And it's uh, considerably lower as my choice for a dirt bike in this <laughs> test, but I like it. Great bike. Yeah, I think because we have the GS, the F850 GS Adventure here, you know, it, it has the presence of it's 1250, you know, older brother. It is, it looks massive and it's 552 pounds. So it is the heaviest bike in this test, but I agree on road uh, and even a little bit of slower off road, it, it really handles pretty well. And it's got a 6.1 gallon tank. So it's bigger than the standard F850, um, but, and it is kind of high, but it's almost, if you keep the speeds a little lower on that, it doesn't, at least it didn't bother me so much. Uh, the fork on that one's completely unadjustable, but it does have the uh, electronic rear suspension that is dynamic and it's kind of like a semi-active feature. Um, so it, it's kind of got the, the accessory catalog or the premium package thrown at it. That's why it's quite a bit more over its 15.5 uh, starting MSRP. But yeah, I mean, I thought the bike was pretty good and surprisingly uh, comfortable on road. What do you think, Sean? It's an awesome bike. It's a beautiful bike. Um, what a great road bike. You know, and I was, I, I think that's probably the first uh, parallel twin BMW ever rode. And I don't know how long ago it was, I remember hearing about, not the best about the, the older iterations of that motor. I think maybe it started out as 650 or something like that. So my expectations hopping <laughs> onto it were kind of low. And I was like, oh, no, this thing can move. You know, you really rev it out on top, it's, it starts to peter off a little bit, but great mid range, you know, shoots you forward. Went with some friends with a couple of the Tenere 700s in, in that off road. And I was pleasantly surprised. Uh, like John was saying, the, the place where you do notice it most off road is if you're coming up to like, you know, a rock or anything that's gonna be a high speed compression hit that's gonna compress the suspension quickly. It's gonna blow through the stroke, especially on the fork really fast. The, the shock you can electronically stiffen the preload and that, that helps. Uh, but if you just keep that in mind and go, okay, I'm not going to try to, you know, do any doubles or a set of whoops, uh, it, it's pretty competent off-road, and then it's a very comfortable bike on-road, and, oh man, who, I don't know, anyone, if anyone doesn't love the dash on the new BMWs, you got to get their head checked. <laughs> yeah, I agree. It's so awesome. <laughs> it's just so clear. It doesn't matter if there's dust on it or the sun's hitting it. You can read everything. Watch movies. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm waiting for my Netflix to pop up on that. The only thing about the interface that did throw me off a little was um, it wasn't as intuitive figuring out how to like reset the odometer or something simple like that. I couldn't always figure I out agree. how to get into some of the submenus of the menu, but that's something if you lived with the bike for a while, I'm sure you'd figure it out. But w what a great interface. Really enjoyed the bike. My girlfriend really enjoyed it. She's like, babe, you got to get one of these. <laughs> Just doing this Expensive. test has got me, it took me back to my roots because I actually learned how to ride in the dirt. And you know, as, am, as a teenager, did a little amateur motocross and then left that life behind. And now I'm all like asphalt and road racing and stuff. But um, taking that thing on the dirt last week is just like, there's something got too, you excited about it yeah, again. Yeah, <laughs> something too, Ryan, going out in the desert and disappearing, you know, <laughs> midweek and not not doing his stories for a few days. I, I see yeah. why. <laughs> yeah, there, there are other reasons. But <laughs> um, yeah, no, the BMWs, it's a pretty awesome package. And, and I think one thing for me that was, it's a little deceiving because every time I put it in dynamic and get on it, you know, in the canyons, I, I get scooted back in the seat and I think, oh yeah, this thing, this motor is peppy for sure, especially low to mid range. And it's actually pretty small and compact too, like kind of between your ankles. And then you look forward and maybe even consider putting your foot out when you're going around a corner or something. And you almost can't because there's so much girth in the front of that thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, right past all those crash bars, it, it's pretty narrow still. Um, John Burns, hi. What do you think of that BMW? Yeah, it's it's okay. It's pretty. It looks almost big as the as the 1250. Yeah. Yeah. Like if you're if you're gonna be, be on on the freeway a lot, if you have to go long distances, if that's your adventure, might be the best one for just mm -hmm. droning along. It's pretty comfy and all that body work takes gives you a pretty big uh, hole in the atmosphere. <laughs> 
which is nice. But overall, for me, it's kind of meh. I think it's Parallel Twins a little... It's just not... It doesn't turn me on as much as the triple in this thing does. <laughs> T-Plane and, uh, and the gootsy has got its own syncopated thing going on. It's, you know, it just doesn't do, do a lot for, lot for me personally. It's yeah. not the one I would take home. It's not nice even with the shot. Bumblebee color? 40th anniversary edition there? Doesn't do anything for you? Uh, it's cool that it's got the, the 40th anniversary, but... <laughs> I'm 20 years older than it, so it's, I'm not that impressed. <laughs> Don't need the reminder. <laughs> I'm not that impressed but with, with, with 40 years. Uh, you know. Okay. Evans? If I had to sum up how I feel about the, the BMW, it would be a surprise. Because I went into this knowing that it's the heaviest bike here by a significant amount. And you can't get past that giant gas tank. So the first time I sat down on it, I didn't have a, it wasn't on a droning section. It was a section where I was one of the last people to pull out of the pullout and I had to get on it and rush to catch up with everybody through a series of corners. And I was stunned. I was really, really surprised at, at how, how well it performed. And then when you consider the, the touring amenities it has, make it a, a really excellent long distance sporty bike, sport touring bike. However, <laughs> We get to the dirt, and uh, the BMW is the one I crashed this morning, less than a quarter mile from when we left our campsite. Um, so I'm not holding that against the bike. Uh, it was You're going pretty quick beforehand, though. I was. <laughs> I, yeah, that engine was screaming right before it seized. <laughs> yeah, um, and so, yeah, I was, uh, I was feeling my oats, and uh, I got taught a lesson by the laws of physics. Um, but once I slowed things down, as was said before, I think by Sean, that um, it worked pretty well in the dirt, despite the fact that you never forget how heavy it is. Yeah, I agree. I think that we all learned a lesson from that crash. <laughs> <laughs> I think we got it on video. I, don't know. I definitely, I heard definitely it in my got it. So. <laughs> so moving from maybe the biggest handful off-road to the Yamaha Tenere, Sean. Wow, I was really pleasantly surprised what an awesome value this bike is. I don't know, maybe maybe I wasn't surprised. It, you know, this, there's been a lot of hype around it and from when it was announced, but uh, I would say it's worth the wait. This thing felt the most to me like an actual real dirt bike, maybe even more than the KTM. Uh, you and I were talking on the intercoms about part of that is the handlebar. Mm -hmm. the, the KTM handlebar surprisingly uh, narrow for a ready to race you know dirt oriented company and this one kind of feels more natural for off-road attacking and going back to what i was talking about the electronics earlier on this capacity of bikes and bikes with below 100 horsepower i'm not too worried about you know um, traction control and things like that for my riding so the fact that and also having to every time you stop go in like you i had to do on the triumph and go in the dash and figure out what mode it was in and am i in street mode you know Either it's ABS on or off and that's it. And that sort of simplicity, if you're gonna do a lot of miles in the dirt, is really cool about this bike. And it was just a blast. And that the 21 inch front and the suspension, you could hit stuff pretty pretty fast. I mean, I think this thing could hang with that KTM, I felt like, no problem. And on the pavement, it was good too. You know, it didn't, it didn't feel super underpowered or anything. Um, much like the KTM, it, the seat's a little narrower, you're a little taller. So if you're short or less comfortable with a tall bike, you, it's something you might want to consider. But I didn't feel like that, oh, I've got to do a lot of miles with the girlfriend on the back and I'm just not going to want to do it. It felt like you could do it on this. It's not going to be as comfortable as those two bikes, but it's not bad either. So, um, and then the price tag, it's 9,900. Yeah, yeah, 10 grand. I'm seriously considering one of these, you know, that, that, <laughs> thanks for, you know, Relighting, reigniting my dirt spark <laughs> from my youth, and um, thinking about maybe moving out the Super Duke and the scooter and making space for an uh, uh, adventure bike. And with this price tag, that's something to seriously look at. So, really impressed with the Yamaha. Yeah, no, I agree. And, and it's cool that Yamaha was able to bring something that, you know, is, is this capable. And at that price point, 10 grand. I mean, you have the 21 inch front, the 18 inch rear, which you also have on the uh, KTM. The others differ a little bit with 17 inch rear tires. But yeah, that Yamaha is set up really well. And I actually took a trip with the Tiger 900 Rally Pro and that bike to Death Valley. And we had to do a lot of highway miles uh, to get out there. And I honestly think that that thing 
offers better wind protection for your legs and your chest. I didn't have any issues with that. And as long as I kept my legs against the bike, it felt better than the wind protection on the Tiger 900. So which it's surprising because it looks very svelte um, and standing up on the bike, it is. It's only until you kind of start trying to get a lot of weight over the front tire that you feel that gas tank that is it's totally up high and it's only a 4.2 gallon tank so it's smaller than the rest of these uh, but it kind of flares out at the front so if you're if you got knee braces on and you're trying to get weight over the front tire it starts to feel a little thick but down here you know you're talking about it being a little taller it it is taller but it, it's not as tall as the ktm and it also the suspension sinks down a little bit easier so it's it's the spec sheet can be a little bit deceiving with that seat height because it, it does feel a little bit lower once you sit on it and right there at the seat it is really narrow um, and yeah, the punchy parallel twin is awesome. It's also the lowest displacement, 689cc, I believe, on that one. Um, but out in the canyon roads, trying to keep up with everybody, not a problem at all. And the brakes feel good. Yeah, it's a it's a great package. John Nave, what do you think about it? Hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna agree on value. You know, it's got a simple LCD dash. Um, it doesn't have any real uh, electronics other than the ability to disable. Um, ABS, but that was the bike that I was really surprised standing up felt very very comfortable in the dirt. There was a, a, a time when Ryan and I were kind of chasing each other and I got off the 890 which I thought was really quick and then I I got on this bike and I thought wow this is something that somebody who's a little bit more dirt oriented would really like. But day one this is the bike that I rode 90 minutes on the freeway and I was really surprised at how competent it was it was comfortable it had better wind protection I was kind of surprised it had better wind protection than, than some smaller bikes that I've ridden that um, it's a great bike I think the value again ten thousand dollars for that bike holy cow they should sell a ton of them because it's just kind of good everywhere with a good set of bags I could see a long cross-country trip on that bike yeah, definitely. I liked it. Great motor. Yeah, for sure. John Burns, what do you think? Uh, if it had cruise control, I'd pay 10 3 <laughs> That's all. That's it. That's all he has to say. <laughs> if it had cruise control and heated grips, I'd pay. Oh, the Triumph's got heated grips. We mentioned that. Yeah, we mentioned them. that. <laughs> if it had heated grips and cruise control, I'd pay 10 5 As it is, I can't do it. It's a great bike. <laughs> Not <though>. interested. <laughs> We're well, going to get a t-shirt made, motorcycle.com. This one has cruise control. <laughs> <laughs> I could probably sell a few of those. Go like hotcakes. Evan's thoughts? Yeah, this is, this is kind of a, a funny situation in that I'm going to choose the Tenere as my second favorite bike of this group. And why would a, an avowed street-oriented guy uh, pick one of the more, more dirty uh, entries in this field? And it's... First of all, it's the, it's the value, that, that's really important. And um, I'm gonna steal a word that Sean used earlier and say charming, it's a really, it's a charming motorcycle. I got on it and every time I've ridden one of them, I, I, I've enjoyed myself. The engine is capable on the street, despite being a smaller displacement of the other bikes. Um, wind protection we've commented on. Um, and even without all the electronic rider aids, which you know, my first choice is, you know, covered with, um, I found it really easy to ride in the dirt and I felt it gave me confidence. It chugged through stuff that um, I'm not sure the other bikes would even if they had, even though they had larger displacement, I just felt really confident. And you know, I also owe the Tenere one since I've, already, I've now crashed the Tenere three times. <laughs> so, uh, crashed, tipped yeah, over. And, then, and, <laughs> and every single time it's picked up, dusted off and nothing's broken. So <laughs> that, that carries a lot of weight with someone as incompetent in the dirt as me. <laughs> right, I mentioned last week that one of the folks had uh, one of these and she went down twice and nothing but some scratches on the crash guards and that was it. It's yeah, surprising how good that motorcycle is for only 64 horsepower. Yeah. You know, and that's the thing. You, you, it's like, again, you can't just look at the spec sheet and the horsepower numbers because when we're going through the canyon roads, I felt just as good on that one as, as the KTM, which was the most powerful one out of the group. So, yeah, I, I agree. Um, there's a few things that I would do to that bike and I'd be really happy with it. Uh, foot pegs, bigger foot pegs, so you can get a motocross boot a little bit farther away from the right side of the motor. Um, and then a wider handlebar for me, but yeah, that's probably, well, and of course tires, first thing tires, but um, yeah.
Oh, oh, one more thing. Heated, yeah. heated grips. They came in handy uh, yeah. when we were all riding out. I was on the Beamer and the, saved my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Glad we all came out here and did this. Um, so I think what's cool about this category again though is you've got a lot of different approaches here and they're kind of their own approaches. You know, if you're really off-road oriented, you want the top of the line electronics that you can really tweak the bike and adjust the bike with. I think the KTM is a great uh, bike for that. It's not the most comfortable bike for the street. You know, you are kind of up on the handlebars a little bit more aggressively, uh, but it definitely has the chops off-road. The chassis and the suspension are great. The Moto Guzzi has got a lot of character. Uh, MSRP on that one's around 13.5, I believe. And the motor is a lot of fun. You'll feel good, feel cool around town. Um, it's, it's got the heritage thing that's hot right now. I dig it. Uh, the Triumph Tiger 900 Rally Pro has got all of the top of the line touring accoutrement. It's got some serious suspension travel. And I, like we already said, I think it's the most well-rounded. If you want to do a little bit of everything, it's really good. The motor is, is great and will kind of maybe be a little bit more towards people that are uh, more in tune with triples or inline fours, that smoother engine character. Uh, that's the bike for it. The BMW is great on-road. You've got a lot of range with that 6.1 gallon tank. Uh, it's kind of heavy off-road. If you're cool with it, that's fine. If you're cool with keeping the pace down, really doesn't matter. Good bike. And then the Tenere, you know, that's, that's the newest kind of addition. Well, aside from the engine displacement bump on the KTM, but the Tenere coming into this category, it's the value, you know, the, the KTM's 14.2, that thing's, you know, th this is 4,200 4, bucks more than that. And so that comes in as the value, but ends up being a great street bike, which we already knew because the motor's from the MT-07 or XSR 700. But yeah, so we already knew the motor was great. And the first time I rode the XSR 700, I couldn't wait to ride an adventure bike with that motor in it. So I think what we should do real quick is go through and talk about just real fast. Sean, what's your favorite bike off-road? KTM, but Yamaha is super close. All right, John Nave. I'm gonna agree, KTM, but the Tenere is very close. Right on, John Burns. I'm gonna go the KTM's, the best off-road vehicle. Okay. I'm gonna say the Tenere. Right on. I'm gonna stick with the KTM. So what about on-road, Sean? Triumph. John Nave. Sorry. BMW. Of course. Nice hat. Uh, John Burns. <laughs> you mean on-road going fast or on-road going somewhere? Both. The KTM's faster on-road, too. Yeah. What about going somewhere? Uh, this one for going somewhere. Yeah. The Triumph Tiger for going somewhere. Evans? Uh, I'm going to go with the Tiger. I'm going to go with the Tiger as well. So, thinking about 14,200, 134 actually, I believe, on that one. The Tiger 17.1, as tested, the 850 is 17.5-ish, 10 grand. What would you pay to actually take home and put in your garage? Which one, Sean? Right now, with all the money, I throw that R1 and race tires. I'm gonna get this Yamaha. <laughs> it's such go. a good value. Good value. John Nave? Uh, you know, I owe BMW a lot of money for the 1200, so I'm gonna go with the Tenere. <laughs> Definitely. John Burns? Uh, I would get the Moto Guzzi yeah. V85 TT. Right on. I would go with the Triumph. Yeah? Yep. Yeah, well, he's the boss. He makes the big bucks. So for me, uh, yeah, it's going to be the KTM. Of course. Yeah, it's going to be the <laughs> <Of course>. KTM. <laughs> I've, I've got a Tuono. I have, I have an 1190 that I've put quite a few miles on. And this bike, it just, I don't mind spending the extra money on the bike to get the bike that I want, that has the features that I want. And again, the electronics package in this, and the suspension is is there. For the Tenere, uh, the money you save, you can do the suspension upgrade, which is something that I would do, and then foot pegs and a handlebar for me for the Tenere. But uh, that pretty much wraps it up, and if you guys watched to this point. Wait, you, wait, wait, wait. Oh, wait, what do you want? I think that I would be remiss if I didn't point out after he just dissed his boss <laughs> about you know choosing the most expensive bike, he goes and says, um, and this is close to a quote, I don't mind paying a little extra for features that I like. Now, yeah, continue. Oh, actually, another remission. Oh, man. Come on. <laughs> Roast mode. I only said that because I spent so much money on my other motorcycle hobbies, but, you know, you throw me the keys, I'm picking the KTM all day long, so it's a great bike. Yeah, the truth comes out. Okay. All right, well, you guys have watched long enough. Sorry for making this video so long, but, you know, 
there's a lot of bikes here. We wanted to cover them all for you and kind of talk about how they uh, compared. Thanks for watching the video. If you like, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, check out the full story on motorcycle.com. We'll have all the photography, spec sheet, side-by-side -side comparisons of that. And uh, thanks for watching. Bye. 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 Bravo. Jim Dandy.